All right, let's talk uh, a little bit about another World War II strike, the face mash, okay? Um, also called another bunch of different names, the tiger claw, um, people have called it a lot of different uh, names. But the idea of the face mash is a quick way for you to interact with your attacker's face without telegraphing so that he doesn't see it coming um, and landing primarily on his eyes with your fingers in his eyes, but also the palm slipping through and crushing his nose. Because when you do that, it interrupts um, sight, right? I mean, when you interrupt, when you get on someone's uh, nose like that, basically it causes the eyes to tear. You could break the nose, which would never be a bad thing. Um, so we'll talk about it. The, the biggest mistake people make when they throw the face mash is they try to make it like a, a palm heel strike that's direct, that goes straight into the target. And that's not what the face mash is. The face mash, the way I'm gonna show it to you, um, there is a height uh, issue. If you're severely you know, outmanned by this guy being very tall, it might not be the right strike. The right strike probably is to come up underneath, right? Like, like we did the last one, the chin jab or something like that, because you can access the shelf of the chin being a little bit smaller and being a little bit shorter. The face mash basically comes down on someone's face. It's like you're holding a grapefruit or a softball, right? And you want your fingers spread. You don't want them arched like this or anything like that. You want it just like you were holding a, a grapefruit. And then the old like Jim, Jimmy Cagney movie, right? I wanna take that and I wanna mash it down into the guy's face. So if you look at Bob, the point of this strike would be for me to have my hands up and like starting position number four, showing him my palms, being really chill, right? And then without drawing the hand back in order to wind up and hit him, I'm gonna go right from where my hand is, straight forward and slightly downward into his face. And the idea is that when my hand impacts his face, it's gonna be something like this, right? So you can see like my fingers, two fingers are in eyes. Maybe there's only one, maybe there's three. Who knows, but I'm probably gonna get one out of four, okay? And if you look at where my palm is, my the calluses on my hand, you can see that that's what, what's likely gonna impact his nose, okay? Um, so what we're trying to do is basically come down. Now you notice, I'm not pulling my hand back what I'm doing is stepping forward, which has the effect of chambering my arm, right? If, it doesn't matter whether I do this to get my hand in that position or whether I do this to get my hand in that position, it's still chambered, okay? So the idea behind it is to not telegraph and to basically come down into the eyes, the nose, whatever. Um, if a guy's head's tucked, okay, if he's a, you know, an actual fighter that knows to tuck his chin when shit's gonna start and start biting down, it's not gonna be available because what's gonna happen is his head will be down like this. So the only thing available to me would be the crown of his head. I'd hurt my hand. That wouldn't be a good strike for me, right? I'd coming down on his forehead and this part of his, his skull, that would hurt my hand more than it would hurt his head, okay? Um, yeah, there's a little bit of neck compression and I'm not gonna mince words and wiggle weeds and say like, well, it could be effective. It's not gonna be as effective as a fucking, no kidding, face mash, which basically, again, comes right there. Okay, that's where we want it. Now, I can attach or I can not attach. Like I said in the last video, I can come in and attach and check his upper arm. What I mean by check his upper arm is I'm gonna control the upper lever, never the lower lever. When you control the lower lever, it's really easy to the guy to just bend his arm and it comes out. But if you're controlling the upper lever, even if he does what's normal when people pull away, he's creating an anchor. He's creating a good vertical surface, right? Think about people pulling a rope. No one pulls a rope without going like this, right? They wanna yank it like this. And this is the same thing. So when you grab a guy's arm and you check that arm, what you don't wanna do is grab low and just have him bend his elbow and pull it out. You wanna have control of the upper lever. So I can do that on the face mash, right? Come in and I can boom, check like this, then step, and there's knees, there's elbows, there's punches, everything like that from the side. Um, or I can not. I can literally stand right here, throw the face mash, boom, and then haul ass. Just get that initial uh, startle, a little bit of pressure in his eyes, maybe you scratch a cornea, 
eyes are running, nose is running. He's not 100%, and that's kind of what we're after, okay? Um, so again, there's a little bit on uh, the face mash, also called tiger claw and all this stuff. Let me add one other thing. Again, the combatives, uh, combatives in quotes, guys out there that wanna talk about gouging eyes and all that stuff. Um, look, if, if I face mash him, if I do like this, he's gonna back up, right? He's gonna, there's gonna be an effect where he backs away. The idea that I'm gonna do a face grab and put my fingers in his eyes, then lift my elbow and shove him down, if it's a really dynamic fight situation, like a true mutual combatant situation, that's very unlikely to happen, okay? Uh, because obviously every action we take has a consequence or a reaction. The guy's gonna do something, okay? So just keep that in mind, uh, the old face smash takedown, uh, we used to practice that back in the old, old days. Um, I don't even teach that anymore. I don't teach to check the arm and then face smash takedown, okay? And the reason is, is tangle foot, right? Too many times I saw people who were in an adrenalized moment just in training, let alone in the street, get their feet caught up in their opponent's feet or their attacker's feet and end up on the ground with them. We don't want to be in that situation. Okay, so again, World War II strike, it is useful. Um, it is a good sucker. Uh, blast it is open hand you're not jeopardizing your knuckles uh, but that's the proper way in my opinion to throw it uh, remember www.combatives k-e-m-b-a-t-i-v-z.com go on our website go on to events scroll down pick an event come out and train with us all right come out and train with us follow us on facebook follow us on instagram like and share this content and follow this channel see you later